Right, church, go ahead, stand to your feet. Welcome to Easter at Langston this morning. Let's get those hands together like this. We're going to praise his name together this morning. Praise in the valley. I praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm sure. And I praise when I'm doubting. Yeah, I'll praise when I'm numbered. I'll praise when surrounded. Praise is the waters, my enemy drowning. As long as I'm breathing, come on. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, we sing praise. The Lord, oh my, I praise when I feel it. I praise when I feel it. I praise when I don't. I praise because I know you're still in control. Love this. Listen to this. Come on. My praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound. Yeah, my praise is the shout. That brings Jericho down As long as I'm breathing As long as I'm breathing I've got a reason to praise the Lord Oh my soul Praise the Lord Oh my soul I won't be quiet No, I won't be quiet My God is alive So how could I keep it we sing praise the Lord, oh my gospel of my salvation to everyone. Make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. The gates of hell are not going to prevail against you, for I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Church, give out a shout of victory to your Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. My praise is your soul. I praise cause you're sovereign, I praise cause you reign, I praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater. You're sovereign, I praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, I praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater. Good morning and welcome to Easter at Langston this morning. Y'all sound fantastic. Got your Easter, Easter attire on. I can see that for sure. Big hats, ties. I forgot my tie. Sorry about that. But we're so glad that you are here. Special day, special weekend. If you've been here all weekend, let me see some hands. Special weekend, some salvations this morning. I have a feeling 
God's not done yet. But before we get to it, take just a minute, turn to your neighbor, welcome them here to Langston Baptist Church this morning, and then we will get rolling. Just a minute. with us today, the risen King, the Lord of Lords, Jesus, the resurrected Savior. Yeah, you can give it up in this place. Man, I don't know about y'all, but even looking from the stage, this place is looking pretty full today. Can we give Jesus some praise in this place? There's not a single name, not a single person that deserves the honor and the glory in this place today other than Jesus Christ. Man, I'm going to try something. Some of you, uh, I can tell you're awake. You've been up since 7 a.m. You were at the sunrise service. Uh, can I hear my sunrise service crowd? Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I didn't really put any parameters, so you could have just cheered. I don't really know who came. Now, for some of you, you're still waking up, and that's okay. Uh, but listen, here's my challenge. By the end of the service, man, you got to be awake. you got to be alive, ready to worship King Jesus. you gotta, you got to pick it up because some of these early morning people, they're going to start slacking a little bit. They're going to get a little tired. So we need, you to pick up the, we need you to pick up the slack. All right, I want you to look to the person next to you real quick and say, man, you look good. All right, now the person to the other side that you obviously don't like quite as much, now you gotta look at them and say, man, you look extra good. Yeah, I'll just tell you, you guys are looking good today. Hey, let me encourage you. If today is your first time ever worshiping with us at Langston, let me be maybe the first person to extend a heartfelt welcome to you to say, man, we're so honored that you chose to worship with us today. We hope this is a place that you feel welcome and at home since the moment you stepped into the parking lot, through the doors, in the pew, as you worship with us today, whether you're worshiping with us in the room, maybe you're in the balcony. The balcony crowd's looking pretty good today. Maybe you're worshiping with us online. We are so, yeah, give it else here the balcony. Yeah. We're so honored that you chose to worship with us today. If you're worshiping with us in the room, I want to encourage you to do something today. In the pew pocket in front of you, there should be a connect card. If you'll take that out, fill it out, and on your way out directly after service this morning, uh, our pastor would love to meet and, get, meet and greet you and even give you a free gift for worshiping with us so we can connect with you um, and make you feel at home and welcome in this place. One last thing I want to encourage you to do today. Uh, in case you haven't noticed already, when you step out into our lobby, directly to the back, to my right, it's going to be to your left, uh, we have a photo wall uh, just to commemorate this day, 
that we got to, that you were here for Easter worshiping Jesus. And so I want to encourage you. Uh, I know the line may be long, and I know you're trying to get to lunch. Uh, but man, let me encourage you, if you haven't already, before you leave today, take a stop by the photo wall. Take a, st take a picture with your family, uh, youth, kids, dads. Um, you can do it. You will be okay. Um, you'll be thankful you did years later. Well, at this time, uh, we're going to do maybe one of the most important things we do all uh, day here today as an act of worship, and we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. You're going to have an opportunity today to give back unto Jesus out of the abundance of all that he has given to you by his death, burial, and resurrection. God gave you his very best. He gave us his son, Jesus to die for us and raise for us. And so we have an opportunity today to give back very little of what we have to offer back to him. Let's pray this morning and we'll take up our offering and continue to worship. God, we come to you this morning grateful and thankful that we didn't come to a funeral service this morning. We came to celebrate the risen King and Lord of Lords. There is no one like him. There is no other God. He is the one true living God. His name is Jesus. God, may his name be lifted up in this place. May it be magnified. God, I pray as we give today of our tithes and offerings, that God, we may give obedient, faithfully, and generously. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. i 
Shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber and he's come to take my name. It alone is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power when my freedom song is found. There ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down There ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down When I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna rise up out of the ground there ain't no Stand and sing this last verse together. Come on. There was a battle. And there was a battle. A war between death and life. And there on a tree, the Lamb of God was crucified. And it went on down to hell. And it took back every key.
the grave I'm walking to. If you want town in the grave, I'm walking to. If you want town in the grave, I'm walking to. If you want town in the grave, I'm walking to.
try to hide this precious blood that gave me life. But in three Let's pray real quick. God, we believe that with everything that we've got. That's why we're here this morning. To praise your name with everything we've got, when even when sometimes it doesn't feel like enough, it doesn't feel like much, but we give it to you because that's all, that's all we've got. That's all you want, our attention, our hearts, and our praise, and we give it to you freely, freely this morning, God. We love you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let's sing in Christ alone. In Christ alone. Life was cry to find a bread. She 
You know, they only brought three charges against him to crucify him. One, they said, this man loves sinners. The second, he healed. You know, they only brought three charges against him to crucify him. One, they said, this man loves sinners. The second, he healed on the Sabbath day. And the third, he claimed to be the Son of God. Did ever a man die like Jesus? They first took long leather thongs with steel pellets or lead pellets on the end and beat him across the back until he could hardly stand up. Then they put a crown of thorns on his brow and his face was bleeding. And he dragged and lifted and hauled that cross. And then, on the cross, he said, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then he dropped his head and said, It's finished. Yes, they laid him away in a tomb. And when they went out to the tomb that morning, they heard the greatest news the world has ever known. He is not here. He is risen. He's alive. He is not here. Death could not hold him. He has conquered the grave. That's the greatest news the world has ever heard. He's a living savior. He's alive. If you believe he's alive, say amen. 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 Praise God. It's good to see. Wow. So many in the house of the Lord this morning. I didn't see how many was here until I get up here and see there's a lot of folks in the house tonight, uh, this morning. It's good to see you here. Happy Easter. If you have your copy of scripture this morning, I want to invite you to turn to the book of John in chapter 20 this morning. John chapter 20. We're going to be looking together at verse number 15 down to verse number 18, and I want to preach a message this morning entitled, Victory in Jesus. That's right. If you're taking notes, write that down. Victory in Jesus. I thank God that you're here. If you were at the sunrise service this morning, uh, one of the things that we did, just as an outward symbol, as the, as the sun was rising, we released doves into the air it was beautiful to see them fly off. Uh, many times in Scripture you see uh, the Holy Spirit descending like a dove, but we saw the doves ascending up into the sky. And I, I just thought I'd come and report to you that they told me that uh, the doves made it home. Yeah. They flew all the way back to Nichols. And I thought about that thing. I thought about that thing. I think, how in the world? They rode here in a car. But they flew back home all the way to Nichols. I couldn't even get to Nichols without a GPS myself. <laughs> you know, I had the thought, they know where their father is. They know who feeds them. And I thank God they made it home. And I thank God that Jesus made it home as well. This morning, I hope that you have victory. Victory. In Jesus. John chapter 20, we're going to begin reading at verse number 15 down to verse number 18. The gospel says, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, 
saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Let us pray. Lord, it's been so good to worship you this morning. Lord, I can certainly feel your presence in this place. It's undeniable that you are here today. And God, we magnify you. We exalt you today. You defeated death so that we can rise from the ruins and be reconciled unto you. Today, we celebrate the empty tomb. Lord, I ask you today to turn me loose. Like a bloodhound after a sin of a lost soul, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll wring me out like mama's dish rag after dinner. Lord, I ask you to preach me like a dying man unto dying men. And Lord, I ask you, as I always do, use me as your vessel to pour out into your people. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory that is due unto you. For it's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Let the church say, Amen. amen. This morning here in our text, it leads us to a graveyard. Now, I know that a graveyard doesn't sound exciting. Nobody likes hanging out in a graveyard. Well, I say nobody. Uh, I I saw something new the other day. I had just finished a funeral, and we had gone to the graveside service. And after the graveside service, as I was leaving out of uh, the cemetery, I looked, and there was a whole family They sat up. They had their lawn chairs out there. They had lunch. They were out there eating. They had board games, and the kids were playing board games out there in the graveyard. I had never seen that before. If that was you, that was the first. Never seen that in my whole entire life. Now, I'm sure that they just wanted to feel close to their loved one. But I thought I'd just tell you this morning, if I pass before you do, Don't come to the graveyard looking for me. Don't come to the graveyard to get close to me. If you want to get close to me, go on down to uh, the sky wheel and get yourself a ticket. And when you get up to the tippy top up there, you'll be a little bit closer to me. You can just go over there to Myrtle Beach International Airport. You can go to Delta and get yourself a ticket. You can board yourself a plane and you can go up into the skies to feel a little bit closer to me because I'm not going down, I'm going up. And I'm here to tell you this morning, my body may be down, but Brandon's going up, baby. I'm telling you this morning that because Jesus has risen, I will rise too. There's nothing in the graveyard for me today. Normally, a graveyard is a place of grief. It's a place of mourning, a place of sadness. It's a place of pain. Oh, but not this graveyard and not on this day. There's good news from the graveyard today. The cross is vacant. The tomb is still empty. The veil has been torn from top to bottom. The gospel still saves. The blood still cleanses. The throne is still occupied. The gates of hell still will not prevail. We wouldn't have gotten up so early this morning if the tomb wasn't empty. Amen? We wouldn't have stood out in the cold this morning before the sun came up if the tomb wasn't empty, amen? We wouldn't have got as dressed up as we did this morning if the tomb wasn't empty, amen? But the tomb is empty, and Jesus is alive. I've come here this morning to shout it as loud as I can shout it. Jesus is alive. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice so cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always 
here. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how? I know he lives. Church, he lives within my heart. Now, there's several moments in the Bible when I read about them or I hear about them, I find myself thinking, man, I sure would have liked to have been there. I sure would have liked to have been present on that day when that happened. I would have liked, there, liked to have been there when Abraham took his son up that mountain to sacrifice him, and he raised that knife up, but just right in the nick of time, the Lord provided a ram in the thicket. I sure would have liked to have been there when Moses talked to the Lord through a burning bush. I would have liked to have been there when that old Red Sea parted and Pharaoh's army watched God's people walk over on dry ground. I would have liked to have been there when Joshua's army shouted and watched the walls of Jericho come on tumbling down. I would have liked to have been there when old King Neb looked into that fiery furnace and he saw those three Hebrew boys in there just walking around with Jesus right there and they're not even hurt and they're not even burned and the Bible says they didn't even smell like smoke. I would have liked to have been there in that valley that day when that little boy, that little shepherd boy grabbed a stone and he put it in a slingshot and he raised it on back and he let that thing go and it hit that Goliath giant right between the eyes and he fell to his death I would have liked to have been there when that little boy sack lunch fed over 5,000 people and less, less than they even had 12 baskets left over I would have liked to have been there that day when they couldn't get that paralytic man into that room and so they lifted him up on the house and they tore the roof off of that place and they laid him down to the feet of Jesus and Jesus healed that man that day. Jesus saved that man that day. He was crippled when he went in, but he was walking when he came out. I'd have liked to have been there many times, but if I could have picked any moment in history, if I could have picked any time in the Bible, it would have been early on that first Easter morning when Jesus got up out of that grave, kicked old Satan in the teeth, and he defeated death, hell, and the grave. We have victory in Jesus. We have victory in Jesus. And by the way, we don't just have victory in Jesus on Easter Sunday. I praise God for some of you that's here today, and it's the only day of the year that you go to church. But let me tell you something. You're missing out. <laughs> You're missing out. Because let me tell you, there's not just victory this Sunday. You all hobble on back here on next Sunday. We're going to still be shouting. We're going to still be singing. We're going to still be preaching. We're going to still be praising because that tomb is still going to be empty. Hey, let me take a little bit farther. Y'all mind if I preach for a moment? I think I will. Hey, hey, hey. It's not just on Easter, but also not just on Sundays. You don't have to be quiet at school. You don't have to be quiet at your workplace. They say you can't talk about Jesus. I say, listen, I can't but talk about Jesus. You got the wrong one today. You say, hey, preacher, I want you to come in and give a little talk. I'd like to give a little devotion. Let me tell you something. You ask me to come, I'm a preacher. I'm going to preach. I'm going to talk about death, hell, and the grave. I'm going to talk about the resurrection. I'm going to talk about sin. I'm going to talk about hell. I'm going to talk about salvation. I'm going to talk about victory in Jesus. We have victory in Jesus in every day that ends in why. One of the goals of the devil, he is to, man, this ain't even used for this, but <laughs> y'all got me all messed up today. Well, one of the goals of the devil is to get us to only talk about the resurrection on one day a year. You see, the most salvations around Easter time why? Because you, you preach and you teach and you shout and you sing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. I don't care about new philosophies and new ways and new programs. The gospel still saves. And anybody who thought I was crazy preaching John 3, 16 last week, I say to you because 11 people got saved. 
It still works. The gospel still works. And I want you to know something this morning. The resurrection changes everything. What are, you, what are y'all so excited about? Why why is the church so excited about Easter and the resurrection? Let me tell you something. If any preacher gets behind the pulpit this morning and he's not excited, he don't need to be behind the pulpit. The resurrection changes everything. But not only does it change everything, it changed me. Personally, it changed my life. And hear me this morning, it'll change you too. Every person in this place and everyone listening in, it will change your life too. And the first thing I want you to see in our text this morning, I want you to see the condition. If you're taking notes, write that down. First, see the condition. Look with me again at verse number 15. The Bible says, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir... If thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. You see, church, when Mary gets to the tomb, a place of grace is a place of grief. A place that should have been a place of grace to Mary is a place of grief. The Bible says here that she was weeping. That's not just shedding a little bit of tears. It's not just getting a little teary-eyed. It's not just getting the sniffles. She was weeping. Back in verse number 13, if you was to rewind and press play, you would see that the angels asked Mary a question. They asked her, they said, woman, why weepest thou? Now we're in verse number 15, not verse number 13. And this isn't angels. This is Jesus speaking. And I want you to notice something. Jesus asked the exact same question the exact same way. He says, woman, why weepest thou? Now, this question is very reasonable because weeping is inconsistent with the resurrection. Grief is inconsistent than grace. In other words, grief is out of place with what just took place. (laughs) Let me say that again. Grief is out of place with what just took place. But you got to see, Mary hasn't quite made the connection yet with what had just happened. As a matter of fact, Mary turns around and right behind her is Jesus. And she doesn't even recognize him. She doesn't even realize that it's him. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Preacher, how in the world? She's walked with him and talked with him. She's worshipped him. How in the world could she not recognize Jesus? Well, be careful, church, being too hard on Mary. Because Jesus has already showed up here today. And some of you haven't even recognized him yet. Ooh-wee. We worshiped him. We have exalted him today through singing, through song, through giving. We have prayed unto him. And you haven't even recognized that you are in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Savior of the world. He's not just the big guy up there. He's the big guy in here. He is the one who reigns. He is here. His presence is in this place. So you can sit down and twiddle your thumbs all you want to. You can sit there on your iPhone and scroll. You can talk to your neighbor about where you're going to eat. You can think about all the sorrows and grief that's in your house and in your life and in your job and in your bones. But as for me and my house, we're going to praise him today. We're going to recognize and realize today that Jesus Christ is here. Don't miss him today. He's here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. I don't think Javier would care if I share this uh, this morning, but his family was here from Honduras worshiping with us last Sunday. And I got to meet him afterwards. 
And I just started talking to them. I didn't even realize that they didn't speak English. <laughs> Javier started translating, and I called on real quick, started working through the interpretation. But here's what Javier told me. We praise Jesus. We preach Jesus. They didn't understand one single word. But here was their testimony. They felt the presence of God in this place. We had a family that was here this morning, somewhere here this morning, that came all the way from Virginia to be at Easter for Langston. I was like, oh, did you come to the beach for spring break? And, and then you worship with us? They said, no, we planned. We could not miss Easter at like seven hours. Some of y'all struggled with seven minutes. <laughs> hey, they said they slipped in with a friend last December, and God was moving in this place, and they've been watching online, and they couldn't wait to get back in the presence of God, how God is working and moving in this place. That was their testimony. They said, woman, why weepest thou? But then Jesus follows it up with another question. He says, whom seekest thou? In other words, who are you looking for to change your current condition? And ladies and gentlemen, that's the question of the hour. Who'd you come here looking for? Did you come here looking for a boom? A country club? You come here looking for a quick fix, a check in the box to fix all your problems? I might just ask, what are you here looking for? But the real question is, who is you looking for? Because there is nothing or no one outside of Jesus that's going to change your current condition. Woman, why weepest thou? Who are you seeking? Who are you seeking today to change your current condition? Let's just get real personal for a moment. Everybody in here came here for something. And there's everybody in this place that needs something. And that something's Jesus. And he's here today. And here's the good news. The Bible says, through the words of the Lord, if you seek me, Come on, somebody, Bible readers, you help me out in here. <laughs> Y'all read the Bible? The Bible says, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you seek me, you'll find me. You'll find me. We're not playing hide and go seek today. He's here. And if you came looking for him, you came to the right place. He is risen and he is here today. Amen. See the condi condition. But also, church, I want you to see the connection. If you're taking notes, write that down. See the connection. Look with me again at verse number 16. The gospel says, Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. That's so awesome right there. In the last verse, her condition was doom and gloom. Do you notice that? Just one verse before. Not a, not a chapter, not a book. Just one verse before. She was in doom and gloom. She was weeping. She was grieving. And he says one word. One word changes everything. He called her. By her name. He said, Mary. And when he called her name, something happened. 
something happened. A connection was made. And you see, the last time she saw him, he was beaten. The last time she saw him, he was bruised. The last time she saw him, he was bloodied. The last time she saw him, he was dead. But Langston Baptist Church, I hope you're picking up what I'm laying down this morning. He's not dead anymore. He's not bloody anymore. He's not bruised anymore. He is alive. The resurrection changes everything. The last time they saw Jesus, he was lifeless. He was crucified. He was dead. He was buried. Now the invitation is to come and see. Oh, how things have changed. He's no longer lifeless. He's no longer crucified. He's no longer dead. He's no longer buried. He is risen. And the same invitation is given to each one of you today. Come and see for yourself because the same power that changed things for Jesus is the same power that can change things for you. And it finally clicked with Mary. It did. It finally clicked with her. This is not the gardener. This is not just a normal man, but this is the one who sought me. This is the one who bought me. This is the one who delivered me. This is the one who taught me. This is the one who loved me. This is the one who saved me. And ladies and gentlemen, the same one who called her name is calling your name today. He's calling your name today. And this wasn't her first connection, by the way. Matter of fact, if you research the life of Mary Magdalene, that's the Mary we're talking about this morning. She had a confrontation with Christ before this time. And that confrontation, Mary Magdalene was filled with seven demons, the Bible says. And he delivered her. Is there anybody in this room this morning You had a confrontation with Jesus before today. You was lost and undone without God or his son. You was in a sin-soaked society, living a sin-soaked life, and you come across the Savior, and he saved you, and he changed your life. Is there anyone who will testify today that you had that connection? She's now a follower of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Everywhere Jesus went, Mary Magdalene went too. Because when the Lord touches your life, (laughs) when the Lord delivers you from your despair and your despondency, when you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, wherever God goes, you go. Wherever God is, is where you want to be. Y'all know folks like that? They just want to be where God is. People who shout just at the mention of his name. You don't have to get a praise team. You don't have to rally a song. You don't have to build up the climax of the music. Listen, all you got to do is mention that name that is above all names. The name of Jesus will bring a shout out to your name because you know that he is your Savior, your Master, and your Lord. People who just get excited when it gets close to Sunday. They start laying out their clothes on Friday. Getting it ready. Just getting it ready for Sunday people who don't wait for Sunday and they come back on Wednesday. Y'all know I'm going to say it today. If there's any day that I'm going to say it, it's today. We have church this Wednesday too. And the tomb will be empty this Wednesday too. And we'll have choir, we'll have praise team, we'll have preaching, we'll have a gospel invitation and people can still get saved and lives can still get changed. Don't wait till Sunday. Because listen, when you get glad, when they said unto you, let us go into the house of the Lord, because Jesus has changed your life. See the condition. See the connection. And lastly, church, I want you to see the commission. If you're taking notes, write that down. I want you to see the commission. I'm going to ask our musician to come and begin to play, but I want you to look with me at verse number 17 and verse number 18. The Bible says, Jesus saith unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God. 
and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. I don't know what version of the Bible that you're using this morning. I prefer a King James Bible. But my Bible says that Jesus told her, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Now, when we read that, we think, well, how rude of Jesus. She just wants to love him. But when he's saying, don't touch me, he's literally saying, don't cling to me. You're going to have to let go of me. You can't hold me here. Because I got things to do. And so do you. You can't stay here today. Sometimes when we get to preaching and praising and giving an invitation, I'll tell you, folks will tell you, sometimes it's hard to leave here and go back in this world. Some to go back into your home life. Some to go back into your schools and your campus. Sometimes it's hard to leave here. And you just want to cling right here. But you got to go because there's things for you to do. Jesus is saying to her, listen, I came here to be born. I was born of a virgin. Had to be a virgin birth so that I could live a sinless life and not be born from the seed of Adam. It was a virgin birth. It was a pure birth. I came here to be born. And I was born in a stable of no reputation. I was here to be born, but I was also here to be beaten. To take the stripes. The chastisement is your peace by my wounds. You, my friend, can be healed. I come to be beaten. I come to be bloodied. I come to die. And he did. Didn't he die, church? He died on that old rugged cross. When he said, it is finished. But he didn't just come to be born. He didn't just come to be beaten. He didn't just come to die because that wouldn't have saved you from your sins. He come to be buried as well. They put him into that tomb. And he stayed into that borrowed tomb and it was borrowed because he wouldn't need it long. He just wanted to stay long enough for you to know and for them to know that he was dead. But on that third getting up morning, that tomb was rolled away and Jesus walked out of that grave victorious over death, hell, and the grave so that you could be saved. But he wasn't done yet. You see, he had to go to the Father. He had to ascend unto the Father. He couldn't stay here in the physical because he'd be limited in the spiritual. He had to go there so the Holy Spirit could come here so that he could live inside of your heart. Because Jesus couldn't at that time in the physical be in Jerusalem and Judea. He couldn't be in Nazareth and Nain. He couldn't be in Caesarea and Capernaum. But when he sent the Holy Spirit, (laughs) he could be in Judea and Jerusalem, Nazareth and Nain. Capernaum and Caesarea Philippi. He could be in Conway and Aner. He could be in Carolina Forest and Myrtle Beach. He could be in North Myrtle Beach this morning as others are gathering together today. He's not just here at Langston. He's there too. But he's not just in our community. He's not just in our city. He's not just in our state. He's not just in the United States. He's in the whole world. He is everywhere for everyone today. So each and every person, every boy and girl, man and woman, might be be saved. 
so that you could walk in victory. Not just here at church, but you could walk in victory at your work. You could walk in victory on your campus, in your schools, on your ball teams. You can walk in victory in your home because the Holy Spirit lives in you. Can I ask you something this morning? What are you clinging to that is keeping you from having victory in Jesus today? Let it go. Can I just say these words to you this morning? Whatever it is, Jesus is better. Whatever it is, Jesus is better. Jesus says, let me go so I can go. And so you can go too. The message of the cross is the tomb is empty. So you don't have to be. You could be filled today with the Spirit of God. You can truly have victory in Jesus. And maybe you didn't walk in here in that condition. Neither did Mary. She walked in in doom and gloom. She walked in in grief. But I tell you, I, think she, I don't even think her feet left the ground when she come out of that graveyard because he's alive. He's alive. And I'm telling you today, no matter how you came in here, no matter what you've done, no matter what your past says, no matter how you feel, no matter what the odds say, no matter what your background says, no matter what your parents said, no matter what they said, no matter what the world says, no matter what the devil says, Jesus has already defeated all that. Listen to him and not them. And today, come to Christ, come to the cross. He'll change your life forever. And you can leave this place walking in victory in Jesus. I ask you to bow your heads, every head bowed and every eye closed for just a moment as we come to this sensitive time of invitation. No one looking around for just a moment. Do you have victory in Jesus today? Do you know that Jesus is your Savior and Lord? Maybe you don't today. I don't know a better day that you could give your life to Christ than on Easter Sunday. The day that we celebrate a risen king. Maybe today you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart today. And today you want to make sure you get it right with the Lord. And you want to give your life to Christ today. If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I want to give my life to Christ today, would you just lift your hand up where you are? I wouldn't embarrass you for nothing in the world. Yes, I see your hand all over the building, from the bottom to the top, from the floor to the balcony. Just lift it up where I can see it. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, sir. All over the building. Yes, I see you in the balcony. If I don't see you, just wave it at me. Yes, I see you. There's nobody looking around. Raise them up. This morning, I want to give my life to Christ. Yeah, I see you in the back. Anyone else anywhere to this morning? Yes, I see your hand. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? I want to give my life. Yes, I see you up there. Yes, I see you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I see you, sir. Anyone else? The Bible says if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in your heart that Jesus came, he died, he was buried, and he rose again. If you will repent of your sin, that means you will turn from your sin and turn to Jesus today. He is faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So today, if you're serious about following Jesus, making him master of your life, right now from your heart to God's heart, would you just pray this prayer to Jesus? Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes. I've fallen short. 
And today on Easter, I repent of my sins. I turn from my sins. And I turn to you as my Savior and Lord. I'm asking you to save me from my sin today. And Lord, I ask you to be my Lord of my life. I give you my life. I want to live for you from this day forward. If you just prayed that prayer and you meant it from all of your heart, you're serious about giving your life to Christ today, would you just lift your hand back up as a sign? I, I prayed that prayer, preacher. Yes, I see your hand. Yes. Yes, I see you. Yes, I see you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I see you. Anyone else? Wave it where I can see it. There's nothing to be ashamed of this morning. You just made the best decision of your life. Yes, sir. I see your hand. Yes, I see you in the back. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? I prayed it. I'm in it. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? I know there was some this morning that also prayed and asked Jesus to save them during the sunrise service. We want to give every single one of you an opportunity this morning to make a public profession of your faith. The way we do it around here, we, we invite you to come and ring our bell this morning and ring it like you mean it this morning because the Bible says that when one sinner is saved, all of heaven rejoices and we want to rejoice with you today. The Bible says if you're ashamed of, before men, of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my heavenly Father. You have nothing to be ashamed of. It doesn't matter if you're in the balcony, you're in the back, if you're in the front. I want you to be bold this morning. Jesus was bold for you. He died for you to save you. He got up out of the grave for you. You can get out of your pew this morning and come ring the bell for Jesus and say, Jesus changed my life. I'm serious about living for the Lord Jesus today. And I want everybody to know that I am saved. Maybe you want to ask somebody to walk with you. There's going to be folks that come. Others that need to come about this altar. Others that need to join our church. Others that just need prayer this morning. We're going to have a time of invitation. I want you to be obedient to what God has said to your heart today. I'm going to pray. Then we'll stand and sing and you come. God. Thank you for joining our live stream today. We pray that you've been blessed by the service. If the Lord moved on your heart today, we'd love to hear about it. Please email me at pastorb at langstonbaptist.com. I would like to invite you personally to come and join us in service because there's nothing like being here. Hope to see you soon.